it's not abnormal to have a real response in insulin and to bring those glucose levels down. The issue is when you're not able to bring those glucose levels down within two to three hours after the meal. Welcome back, everybody. We're here today, brand new Cabral Concept. This is episode 2699. Looking forward to going over for anybody who's been testing their blood sugar because obviously wearing a continuous glucose monitor and testing your postprandial glucose levels, which just means your blood sugar after you eat, is becoming far more popular, especially, I would say, over the last five years, there's just been a surge in popularity. And one of the reasons why it's becoming more popular and more people are doing it is because we know the link to higher levels of blood sugar, uh, especially sustained overnight and overall health. So it's a proxy, essentially, for looking at potentially heart disease and type 2 diabetes and potentially Alzheimer's and cancer and all sorts of different things. But before five years ago, nobody really had access, unless you had diagnosed type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetic at best, that you were able to get a continuous glucose monitor. So for everybody else, simple finger prick, you would take your blood sugar after a meal, but you know, you'd have to end up with so many different finger pricks at the end of one day just to get a good look at what does your blood sugar look like after a meal, 30 minutes after a meal, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 minutes, has it come all the way back down to normal baseline, yes or no? Then, what's your fasting when you wake up first thing in the morning? So, you know, it was not easy to tell. Now, you could take something, I just used the newest one, the Libra 3, I'll be doing a product review on that in just a couple of weeks, because we're gonna be able to open source this now to more people for less expensive than other ever, which I love. Um, again, it's not a an Equalite product, but I team up with the best companies to say, hey, how can we, open source these things you would typically need a doctor for, because you still need a doctor, but they can they can sign off on it um, through a pharmacist, and you can get them shipped anywhere. So now, for it's essentially the size of your thumbnail. I just uh, did a video on Instagram the other day about it. And you can put it on your abdomen, uh, right beside, a couple inches beside your uh, navel, your belly button. You can put it on the back of your arm. Really easy, right? And so then what it does, it shows your blood sugar all day long, and it's really impressive. But one thing that I noticed as I've done this for quite some time, is I noticed that I started to get what's called a biphasic curve after some meals. And I was like, all right, let me look deeper into this. Why do I get an initial rise in glucose, and then it comes down, and then I get a second rise in glucose, and then it comes down over the next hour or two? And so th the research has actually only been done over the last couple of years, like different, like really good research. And it's something called a single versus a biphasic curve. I wanna go into what that means, because if you start to look at your glucose, which I'm sure you will at some point, that you're gonna notice this. And so let me just give you what I saw based on my, I, I wear, I probably worn, I probably worn now five different um, CGMs, continuous glucose monitors, um, all, you know, spread over the last, let's say three or four years or so. I probably average two a year. Um, and it's just, if I change my nutrition, if I change, you know, my meal plan, I wanna just see how it's working with my blood sugar. But now I'm wearing them far more often. The reason is, is that I'm testing a lot more. You don't have to do that, but I just want you to know that on the back end, I'm always testing, always testing new products, seeing how it works, seeing how it works with my body, and giving you the explanation. Whenever I have a predominantly carbohydrate-based meal, I get one rise and one fall. It's really clean. It's really simple. Blood sugar is back to normal within a couple hours maximum. Okay, so that's good. When I eat a more complicated meal, which I think most people do, it contains some carbs, some fat, and some protein, then you get a more complicated. So it's either a long, slow rise and a long, slow fall, some people, it's a gradual rise and a gradual fall, or and that's but those are monophasic, which we'll talk about. So one rise and one fall, or you can get biphasic. And I was seeing much more biphasic curves. That means my blood sugar went up, came back down, went up, came back down. Really interesting. Let me share with you what the research on that is. So first, if you don't know what insulin is, you don't know what blood sugar is, quick recap. When you eat carbohydrates or protein, like a lot of people like to overlook that, a lot of people like to overlook the protein part, the higher the glycemic load, so if it's a big protein meal or carbohydrates, it will raise your blood sugar. That in and of itself is not a bad thing. Like you don't need to stay sub 100 the whole day. Some weird 
biohacking you know, based communities make it seem like that's what you need to do. You don't. Actually getting some rises is a signal to the body to decrease fight or flight, to decrease stress hormones, cortisol hormones, tell the body you're not starving. I mean, like there's, there's a lot of, I mean, you get neuro, better neurotransmitter production, uh, potentially more serotonin. So there's, there's a lot to it, right? Now, you don't want out of control blood sugar spiking all day long, that's for sure. But two to three blips over the course of a day is not a big deal. It's honestly not. That's like part of human living. The longest lived people in the world, I've, I've broken down their diets before and they're eating three times a day sometimes one more, right? Like sometimes a snack, like nuts or something like that. So again, keep in mind, um, those are the longest lived people in the world, right? Whatever we're doing right now may or may not work, may or may not, right? But we know what does work at least to get to 100 and beyond. So what I wanna share with you is this. When you eat a meal, you can get a rise in your blood sugar. Then your pancreas is gonna release insulin, right? Insulin from those beta cells, that is what's going to shuttle the glucose into your cells and out of your bloodstream. When that happens, your blood sugar begins to fall. When that no longer happens is when you start to get diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and you need to start going on some type of insulin-based medication. Well, our bodies naturally produce insulin if we're keeping that pancreas in good working order. So what's the difference now between that single spike and a biphasic spike, which is a double spike, two spikes after a meal? So I thought, like, this doesn't seem good, right? Two spikes after a meal doesn't seem as good as one spike after a meal. Turns out, this is why we actually look at the science, right? This is why this is important. I'm going to share with you this. Studies have shown a monophasic glucose curve following a meal to be associated with decreased or impaired, impaired first phase insulin secretion. In other words, a single spike curve or single spike curves may be associated with an impaired insulin response. Another study demonstrated that a decrease in the first phase of insulin secretion may be associated with an increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes. A biphasic glucose curve may be a result of better insulin secretion in the first phase in addition to improved insulin sensitivity, which creates two spikes. I'm going to give you two more studies, but a possible explanation right now. So, when your body has, again, if you're, it's a predominantly carbohydrate meal, I don't think you're really going to get too much of a biphasic spike because it's, it's fairly simple. Like, this is a simple meal. You're not mixing fats uh, with proteins with carbs. Your blood sugar is going to go up. Your insulin, or you're, you're getting the signals to send uh, to the beta cells of the pancreas to release insulin. And I think your body's probably pretty good at that, at like single, easy to digest carbohydrates, like if you just have a banana or if you just have some fruit or something like that, okay? That's what I've seen it and, and the studies do seem to back it up. Now, more complicated meal, your body's essentially guessing. It's, I know there's no guesswork with the intricacy of our body, but our body is sending out a certain amount of insulin that it says, okay, what do we need to bring down this first phase of food based on the signals that we're getting? That's the amount of insulin that's being produced lowers the blood sugar. Now, your body gets to say, okay, based on how much it's come down and how much is coming in, this is what we most likely need to secrete in terms of insulin. It seems like that's what these studies are saying. And if your body's able to do that, it seems that there's more sensitivity to the pancreas and the insulin rather than decreased sensitivity, which is what leads to insulin resistance, which is what leads to then type 2 diabetes. Let me give you two more studies that back this up. One study investigated the relationship between the shape of a glucose concentration curve, different metabolic risk profiles, and the risk of type 2 diabetes. A cohort of 121 adults underwent an oral glucose tolerance test, which were assigned to either a monophasic or diphasic glucose response group. Researchers found that those with a monophasic curve following an oral glucose tolerance test tended to have higher fasting and two-hour plasma glucose levels, lower insulin sensitivity, and impaired beta cell function. What does all that mean? It means this. Those people with only a monophasic versus biphasic typically have poorer fasting glucose levels, poorer um, ability to get their blood sugar to normal after two hours of consuming glucose, carbs, et cetera. Lower insulin sensitivity, 
so they don't produce as much insulin as needed or the right amount to get the glucose out of the cells and impaired beta cell function, which is typically not producing as much insulin as needed to lower blood sugar levels. The cap on this was, these results suggest that those with monophasic curves are less metabolically healthy and exhibit a higher risk of prediabetes and metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome, remember, is hydroglycerides, hydroglyceride or, or um, hydroglycerides, high LDL cholesterol, or oxidized-based cholesterol, typically higher blood pressure and uh, type 2 diabetes or higher blood sugar. The biphasic curve group was associated with better health outcomes, lower fasting insulin, higher insulin sensitivity, and lower body mass index. Another study looked at the shape of a glucose response curve to an oral glucose tolerance test in 277 obese adults without diabetes. Subjects were categorized into a monophasic or biphasic response group based on which curve type they experienced following a two-hour oral glucose tolerance test. Researchers found that the monophasic curve had significantly lower insulin sensitivity and beta cell function in comparison to the biphasic group. These are two significant biomarkers of type 2 diabetes and significantly uh, signifying a higher risk for metabolic syndrome if you have one curve. The last study is this. It analyzed the difference between first phase and second phase insulin secretion in obese adults and with normal glucose tolerance, impaired glucose tolerance, and type 2 diabetes. Researchers found subjects with impaired glucose tolerance to have, a, have significantly lower first phase insulin levels when compared to subjects with normal glucose tolerance. Subjects with type 2 diabetes displayed a more profound defect or defect in insulin secretion in both first and second phase. This suggests that pre-diabetes or impaired glucose tolerance is an intermediate stage in impairment of insulin secretion. With type 2 diabetes, having a more pronounced effect of both first and second phase of insulin secretion. All of that to say that, again, I love the continuation of science. I love being able to learn more and more. And I love being able to get these continuous glucose monitors out there to people because here's why. We learn more the more people who wear these and the more labs that we can run. But the big takeaways were this. Biphasic curves after a more complicated meal may be associated with higher insulin sensitivity, lower glucose levels, and a lower rate of metabolic syndrome. That's a good thing. While the shape of your glucose curve may help provide some insight on your metabolic health, the information overall has to be looked at in the totality of you know, all of your labs. So I don't want to say that as well. And what I want to share with you is this. I believe it is different based on the results that I've seen where I have healthy blood sugar levels, and um, I have good fasting glucose levels. And what I saw when I tested my body with different meals, I don't believe you're going to see a huge biphasic curve with simple meals. <clears throat> when I do think that you're going to see it, if your blood sugar is healthy, is in the response to a more complicated meal. Because your body is basically first wave, bring it down. Don't overproduce, don't underproduce. Then gauge how much more is needed, send out more into the body, bring it all the way down. It's very interesting. The other takeaway is this. It's saying that it's not abnormal to have a real response in insulin and to bring those glucose levels down. The issue is when you're not able to bring those glucose levels down within two to three hours after the meal. Start to look at the meal, start to look at overall hemoglobin A1C on your blood work and overall insulin levels. So I wanted to share with this with you really fascinating. And um, I know I'm going to continue to track my blood sugar, find out again, like what meals are working best, uh, and then the overall, you know, response to certain foods. So here's the thing. If you're seeing that double spike, it's not a bad thing. It may actually be a good thing. It seems right now that it's more protective than a one large single spike, especially if it doesn't come down for three plus hours after a meal. I'm going to link up the actual, uh, if I can, if it's already out, because we are working uh, with a new company now just to get better pricing for people. And also, you do need a doctor to sign off on these. So I'm going to do my best. But if it's not already out, I'm going to do a Friday review on it. For all the links for today's show, head over to stephencabral.com slash 2699. Uh, we'll try to get you that as quickly as possible. But this podcast was 
Use any continuous glucose monitor in the world. You can monitor your glucose. Now you know the difference between monophasic and biphasic spikes after a meal. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. I'll talk with you soon. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.